As always, don't forget to check the video description down below for the best price on tools and parts I use in today's video. Today, got this 2016 Nissan Altima doing the rear brakes. Let's check it out. All right, the first thing we're gonna do, take your wheel off, you got 21 millimeter lug nuts. Make sure you use a jack, always use jack stands and wheel chocks are also a really good idea. Then we're gonna come on over. We got, we gotta take this caliper off. You got 14 millimeter bolts on there, one there. I went ahead and break them loose. How I break bolts loose, I just put the ratchet on there and I'll just bang, bang, bang. I'll hit the ratchet, break it loose, and then go ahead and zip it off. This amazing, fun little tool to Milwaukee 3 8 ratchet. Uh, link below in the video description to get one of these. Saves you a lot of time. And then looks like our slide pins are like kind of like the bolts like that sometimes they're not bolts sometimes they're just slide pins it's like the slide pin built into the bolt all right so now go ahead and this one just came right off and sweet i didn't know if it was gonna be one of the ones with notches where i have to take my little tool and spin it and push in so that's nice that it's just one you just take an old brake pad stick sit it in there take your c-clamp and just kind of clamp it so no big deal there so we'll set this up here then here are our pads pretty skinny so go ahead and just take them out and then we're gonna check this rotor the thickness will take a pair of calipers and measure because if they're below minimum thickness it is unsafe to drive you do not want to do that um, you don't want to wreck and die and cause somebody else to die so We'll see it here in just a second. All right, here we go. This is a, cal a set of calipers and this is used for measuring your brake rider. So I'm gonna turn this on. We're gonna find out together. This should be eight millimeters or larger. Um, new, it was like nine millimeters. So this will also tell you if you can have them resurfaced. You'll see right on the inside, there's a little bit of a like it goes flat and then it goes down a little bit that's to account for the rust look a little fun fact eric the car guy and i had a conversation this was years and years ago and he's like you can't use the flat ones um, he's like you might as well put a wrench on it um but there is there's space there for a rust lip and it's, it's no big deal so by the way we we talk since and he's great he's awesome so no no complaints there and what do we got Ooh, we got right, right at eight. Wait, 8.3, let's measure around again. 8.7, let's make sure we're zeroed. We're not zeroed. So we're gonna zero it out on flat. We're gonna come back and 8.9. I'm, I'm not feeling real good about these measurements, y'all feeling like this this caliper is like off so we got zero let's do it one more time I'm reading 8.6 okay he's fine so we measured 8.6 8.7 8.9 so these are fine um you could also turn these my philosophy on turning rotors is if it's your own personal car and you're saving a bunch of money anyways and like you can check the video description down below for like the little package prices on pads and rotors and you may be paying 40 to 60 bucks for your pads and your rotors when you go to the part store you know sometimes you'd be paying 40 dollars for pads and you know 30 40 dollars a rotor you're saving so much money i would replace pads and rotors every other brake job so once you have the new rotors the next brake job just put pads on the brake job after that pads and rotors and so on um that just keeps it so if you were to turn these rotors it's going to cost you anywhere from eight to twelve dollars at your local part store to have them turn them for you you have to wait on them and they will warp again more quickly because they'll be skinnier so what I'm telling you, you'll never, you'll never have to turn them, and they're not going to warp as quickly. And if you're doing it yourself, it's just so inexpensive. Even for customers, um, it works out pretty close to the same price if they just replace the rotors. It is a little bit more expensive, um, but then again, you're not having them warp as quickly. So, but yeah, that is 
that so these rotors are going to stay on if you did want to take this rotor off all you would do is you would come back here and it looks like we got man that is a big bracket bolt that's probably like a probably like a 19 maybe a 21 probably 19 um so you're going to take you take that bolt off and you would take that bolt right there off and what that'll do is that will take this bracket off and then you'll be able to pull you can see I'm moving this rotor right here this rotor will slide off um, if you have any trouble you can take a big four pound hammer BAM bang there BAM bang there if you're replacing the rotor I mean you can even just smack on the back of it too and this one looks like it has a drum inside the drum brakes inside typically I've been doing this for about 14 years now um, never just about never replace this because it's your parking brake and you're not actually using the material on the shoes so I mean you can they do you know of course they sell the parking shoes and stuff but typically you're always just going to be placing replacing the rear pads um, and rotors every other time that's my philosophy on it so yeah let's go ahead and um, get our new pads well if you use the new clips like these guys right here you can pop these out and put the new shiny ones in um, I don't grease those if I do that if I reuse the old ones I'll just kind of throw some grease on the end of the pads here and I'll put them back in with the grease on them if I'm reusing the old ones um, but not not necessary if you're putting the new clips on all right and now I've got my caliper set up I put two pads in there makes it a little quicker because I keep the C-clamp about the same length every time. Um, oh, and sorry guys. I'm going to set it up on there. It's going to look like that. And then with my right hand, I'm going to spin that in. And that is going to compress this piston back into the caliper. And, it's a quick little note too. If you've ever put brake fluid in, in between a brake change, what will happen is up front, you'll have some brake fluid drip down. That's no big deal, but what happens is as this piston comes out, when you use the pads, that fluid level is going to go down. And when you put the new pads in, it's going to raise the fluid level back up. And like I said, if you've added or if you've taken it and got your oil change and they topped off all your fluids, it will come back out because it didn't need that much fluid. So it's not something you typically have to add. If you do have to add brake fluid, it means you probably actually had a um, brake fluid leak, like a hole in the line or like a leaking piston seal or something like that. So I'm gonna compress this back and then we'll put the new pads in. All right guys, so we got our new pads and as you can see, some of these backing plates come off. Um, the other ones, they kind of stuck on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just bend that down just a little bit and you can bend the other sides down too. But when I do that and I kind of push it back on, you'll see now it snaps on, stays on a little better. And then these, like I said, I would take a little bit of brake grease. Brake grease is gonna be um, something like this. Again, video description down below. I'll leave a link for brake grease. If you do get your pads, just to let you know, FYI, pads at your local parts store, I would get, of course this is, I won't mention who it is, but if you know anything, you know where this came from. Um, but I would get like a gold box, like, um, gold or equivalent just because they will not throw up the brake dust as much and they won't squeak um, you don't want to put new pads on and then have squeaky brakes the really cheap ones will still squeak and make noise even though they're brand new um, and ceramic will oftentimes throw up a lot less dust so I like to do that for customers just because you don't want comebacks so anyways we're going to pretend I got grease on here because these look like they're just going to slide in and that's the thing is you want them to be able to move move freely if these were really rusty I would change out a little clip um, this is still a fairly new car it's not gonna matter a whole lot on this car another thing I'll we'll look at the old pads and we can see this one so this one had the little squeak clip on it so your squeak clips are usually gonna go towards the back or the wear indicator whatever they call it um, it causes it to squeal is usually going to be to the back so 
we will have, huh, this one only had one, this new set of pads only had one little clip there, because this one did not have a clip, so just make sure you put the new one where the old came off, so we can see we got this one right here, so we'll make sure we stick this one in the back, like that, that's on there, then this one in the front there, boom, and that is our nice new pads now. Okay, y'all, as far as putting this thing back together, basically, it's pretty much the reverse of the removal. You can see that piston is now flush inside. That's after compressing it with that C-clamp. And this will just kind of go on over here to take this. Now this, I will make sure every single time that I put some grease on there. And you can also see there's some little debris on there. We do need to wipe that off. And I'll go grab my grease and a towel, wipe that off. And then we'll put the slot pin in there. Um, kind of here and I'll just show you what that looks like all right so I wipe this guy nice and clean and take my little grease guy here and then I'm just gonna kind of apply I don't want to get my car greasy but anyways just generally I mean not generally liberally apply grease and then we'll just stick that in right over here just kind of take it uh, and work it in there boom then you'll tighten that down, come over here, do the same thing, stick it in, tighten that down. Um, just snug them down there, good, and put your wheel back in, of course put your lug nuts in. I I use my Milwaukee Impact, I go, um, I ram them on until it goes boom, boom, boom. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing good. <laughs> Alright, anyways, wrapping this up, boom, boom, boom. Um, so once you just one time smack it, you'll take, I'll take like the 21 and I'll take a breaker bar. I'll just snug each one. Uh, it should probably be like 80 foot pounds or 90 foot pounds or something like that. But um, that is pretty much it guys. Not too bad going back together. So thanks for watching. See you next time.